Let's bring in independent journalist Marcy Wheeler. She's a former senior fellow at George Washington University Center for Cyber and Homeland Security, and perhaps she can set, shed some light on this well, so, so, it was so called scandal. So, so Miss Wheeler, what, what, what's uh, so fascinating about your work is you were extremely skeptical of the original story when it came out I guess, in 2016 and you were telling everybody at the time this is bogus this is nonsense nothing to see here so you've already hit that side but now you, you tell us tell us about this durham filing because you've been quite critical of durham as well well um uh, tom mentioned a filing from sussman overnight and one of the things he revealed in that, which I've heard from other people, is this claim that Rodney Jaffe was accessing data from the White House. All of that data precedes Trump's inauguration. So you've got Trump out there calling for these people to be put to death, when really what happened is Rodney Jaffe was trying to keep Barack Obama safe from hackers. That's all it is. And that's why Trump wants these people killed. So, and, and Durham knows that. Durham knows that this data precedes Trump. He didn't include it in the filing. So he's got everyone all work on Fox News. Um, John Radcliffe, you showed him earlier. Cash Patel is the source of many of these false claims. They were both witnesses to John Durham. And Cash Patel has known about this allegation going back to, to December 2017 because he's the one who first asked Michael Sussman about it. Michael Sussman was honest about it back in December 2017. And Cash Patel, when he was a uh, Homeland, uh, the, the Intelligence Committee staffer, when he was working in the White House, when he was the chief of staff for DOD, he did nothing about this because he knew that all that Rodney Jaffe was doing was trying to keep the White House safe from hackers. That's what this is about. John Heilman. Well, I'm just curious, Mary, like, where do you think, uh, to the extent that you can kind of discern what, what A, what the motivations are of, of, of some of these players, of, like, of Durham, for, for instance, and where does this go yeah. from here uh, in the in the in the aftermath of, of this pseudo scandal that we're seeing. Well, the Durham investigation is in real trouble. One of the things that um, and Tom mentioned this briefly, but one of the things that Sussman revealed overnight is that Durham didn't interview like one of the allegations in the indictment is that Sussman was was coordinating with the Hillary campaign on 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 these Alpha Bank allegations. Back in October, Sussman was like, name the people. In October, uh, Durham said, uh, I don't have any people. In November, he first interviewed a Hillary staffer. He hadn't actually investigated this. We also learned recently that um, even though Durham and Bill Barr flew to Italy to get the phones from Joseph Miss Sood, who remembers that uh, Italian who was talking to George Papadopoulos, he never walked across DOJ to get the phones from James Baker, who is the single witness to this conversation with Michael Sussman. He didn't find out that DOJ IG had two of those phones until January. And then after he revealed that he had these phones that he should have looked for years ago, he then had to disclose that he had been told about one of these phones back in 2018, but he didn't remember it anymore. So what you've got, and those aren't the only things that Durham has had to admit that he didn't do before charging Michael Sussman. He didn't investigate how the FBI killed a story that the New York Times was going to come out with before the election, um, partly because of what Sussman did, which counters all of the motivation that Durham says he's, he's working on. Durham didn't investigate that until after he had charged Sussman either. So um, Sussman on Friday probably is going to submit a motion to dismiss this entire indictment. And probably what last Friday's stunt was about for Durham was an attempt to preempt that, an attempt to pretend that this investigation isn't kind of post hoc a discovery of things um, for example, he didn't investigate what FBI's relationship is with Rodney Jaffe before he charged Michael Sussman. He only he only pulled those communications when Sussman said, why don't you go find out what kind of relationship the FBI really has with Jaffe? And he discovered there were thousands of communications. So, um, so Durham is very close to a position where Sussman is going to have the opportunity to say, you didn't do an investigation before you charged me.
And a week before he probably is going to have to do that, this stunt comes out and, and you have all these people who were witnesses who, who fed these conspiracy theories to Durham on the front end, who wow. then go on Fox News and make false claims about it. And that's what this story is about. It's it's Cash Patel garbage in, Cash Patel garbage out, and then Trump threatening to kill people as a result. It's that okay. simple. <laughs> uh, wow, that just sums it up. Marcy Wheeler, thank you very much. Thank you, Marcy. You know, the, the right is feasting on this. Well, yeah. I, 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 think it's fa I think it's fascinating that, again, uh, uh, Michael Steele, let's, <laughs> let's just follow up on what you said. You have, you have Trumpists and Donald Trump calling for the mm -hmm. execution of people. He said in Jeez. tougher times, people would be executed for this. You have Marco Rubio going on last night saying that Trump's White House was spied upon. When, in fact, uh, it appears, if you look at the pleadings, that, mm -hmm. that this all happened during the Obama administration, and they were checking the traffic because, because there were Republicans and Democrats who were deeply disturbed by what, what Donald Trump was saying during the presidential campaign. They were leading up to an election, and they were very concerned. Yeah, I, you know, the, the thing that struck me in sort of listening to the last two segments, um, it, it just it just reminds me of just how many times we get caught in the Donald Trump stupid trap and how many times, you know, you, you watch this process unfold, Joe, in which Donald Trump uh, and his ilk are out there massaging and trying to maneuver the messaging around because as we've already indicated, and as Marcy just very clearly laid out, the facts don't line up. It's not there. You're having a post hoc discovery of, of something that actually on its face makes no sense. It hasn't made any sense since 2016. Why the heck do we think it's going to make sense now? You have Durham out here who is in the position and just put it on the street. Uh, hit when he was initially uh, put into this role, what was the purpose of it? It was to go out and f create a set of facts to meet a narrative that Donald Trump wanted executed. A and so as the system grinds to a halt yet again because of the crazy world of Trump colliding with real life, we're, we're sitting here looking at and reading pleadings in which anyone who has a scintilla of brain power left in their head recognizes this makes no sense. This is grist for the mill for Fox News to go out and, and further gum up the works to create a whole lot of noise about nothing. That at the end of the day, like Benghazi, after all the noise and all the saber rattling comes to what, right? So the reality of it is we can persist in this, in this game or we can call it crazy, let the judicial system, the justice system, play itself out in which they put a stamp on and go, nothing here, let's move on. And I think yeah. what, what's, what they're trying to preempt is that, is that end, Joe. They don't want that end because they know what happens after that, nothing. Yeah, well, you know, in, in Benghazi, of course, Willie, they politicized the death of four Americans. Yes. Uh, and and, and it, with Benghazi, there was the death of four Americans here, you are going to have an investigation that la into an investigation that lasts longer than an investigation, and I would be shocked, shocked if there is one criminal conviction in this entire thing. But there will be a lot of headlines, oh, yeah. and there are a lot of people making assumptions that are going to look really foolish months from now, but they don't care because they're just gaslighting, and they'll just continue. And it's an effort to change the subject from the investigation to January 6th. That's another yeah. element of, of this story. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.